Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the official channel for Alpha Born. Yes, you read the title correctly. Have I just made the strongest chandelier for official and unofficial ever made before? So originally, I already made a chandelier video, which as you can see just behind my character now. And 97 to 98% of this was positive feedback from you guys in the community. And I'm gonna demonstrate a few things with it before. The last video and the same with this video does one, not look into building location. Build this chandelier if you wanna use my design, wherever your base is, okay? This is not about where it's built. And I also will not be touching too much upon the actual cliff clat itself. You guys, obviously you know your own style in the sense of how you like to put the gens or how you like to put force fields on them, but with my newest design, I will have one tip or two tips to go with the cliff plat. So, without further ado, let's jump in and have a look at my old design. So as you can see here, what I actually did was I used a cliff plat, two square foundations, three triangle foundations, and rinse and repeat. Now from here, we actually pillar down and we keep going all the way down to the ground and wherever you get the opportunity, you snap it to the ground. You don't have to snap this one to the ground, but when you do snap it to the ground, you kind of create a sort of hybrid between a chandelier and a turret tower, which means that with chandeliers, if you just take care of the cliff plat, the whole thing drops. With a hybrid style, you can take out the cliff plat, but the actual design itself stays there. That's the important thing, that's why I'm saying, Unofficial and unofficial, if you have the opportunity to snap a chandelier to the ground, do it. Okay, you automatically double the strength of your chandelier. So, as you can see, based on my design, uh, we repeat what we did with the foundations all the way down, and that also means that the hatch frames are not connected, which means that when raiders are destroying stuff, they're technically destroying things as individuals. Now, one of the reasons why a lot of you guys who have seen the first video actually liked it was a lot of the norm or a lot of the average chandeliers that are currently out there are generally based around one to two pillars and that's it. Meaning you take out the pillars and you've already dropped the whole thing. My design, everything is snapped together, which means when you take out a handful of pillars, nothing will change whatsoever. Which then, of course, in turn, means as base defense this is a lot harder to break through so you see so right there I've done quite a lot of damage and there's a two pillars left now I can drop another I can probably drop both of these actually let's have a look there we go so that's completely disconnected now and as you can see nothing actually changed and that's all because it's snapped in the ground where if it wasn't these would have now dropped and they would have disappeared so this one's like I said, one of the favourites that YouTube have shown me so far, okay? Uh, there's a lot of turrets on this one, unfortunately I actually ran out because I built both chandeliers quite close together just so you guys could see them up close to person. So yeah, this was the original one or the old one and this one has been used on Alpha Born by many tribes now for probably a year to a year and a half. And it wasn't actually that long ago that I put it on YouTube. Um, but, as you guys know, I like to play around with builds. I like to see, can we make them better? And essentially, it's just better snap points would usually mean a better design. So, the reason why this design was so well is, as mentioned before, if you get rid of the cliff plat, only the top row disappeared. And the rest of it has now turned into a kind of turret tower. Okay, so like I said, that was my original design. I still stand by it 100%. If resources are expensive for you or you want to get something strong up as quick as possible, this design, 100%, people in, on my cluster have been using this now for over a year and they still love it. They can't find a design better than it. I, however, I think I have now built a design better than it. And I'm going to talk to you briefly about that design now. And afterwards, I'm going to do a speed tutorial on how to build it. 
okay so again i am now on my uh, single player so this is based upon official settings now i'm going to explain the difference between official and unofficial while i'm building it but essentially just know right now if you're official or unofficial both sides can do this build okay the only downside is on official you have a 100 turret limit um, and if you have quite a small base you don't really want to put all your turret limit onto one chandelier if you have quite a large area though 100% you can use this and this will definitely keep people busy for quite a while before they can get in so here comes the new design so as you can see it's not 100% different or it's not a massive change but for example, pillars only have 6,250 HP. Let me just double check. Yeah, 6,250. Where door frames or double door frames actually have 10K, the same as a metal wall. So, what I've actually done up here is same again. We've done two square foundations, three triangle foundations, two squares. And we've actually gone we've, we've sunk the foundations very slightly literally three snaps or three goes down and that's enough just to make sure that the cliff plat itself actually has more protection because as you can see i turned them all into blocks which means now the cliff plat has a bit more hp or your radar needs to be so accurate with whatever they're doing to get the actual cliff plat itself and as you can see using the triangle foundations and the square foundations you can then cover majority of the cliff plat so that's the thing i'm going to say if you did want to try something with a cliff plat doesn't require say a tech force field um, or anything on the lines you can do something like that to just give it a, a little bit more of hp then coming down into door frames and then at the bottom believe it or not you can you should be able to actually snap or guarantee a snap through foundations and then you can just replicate what you've done up top with the cliff plant. So now again this has become more like an hourglass or more like a hybrid between the two and that's got I believe 50 toes on right now so you don't need to make it as big if you don't want to but I mean as you can see there's multiple snap points being used so that means that when you do destroy a door frame then you actually you're gonna have to destroy more okay so with the old one in the official settings when you when you came down the bottom to snap the final pillar sometimes it would say yes sometimes it would say no you'll see green you'll see red sometimes it wouldn't even register it, you wanted it down there so that took a, a bit of time and it's kind of irritating to be honest doing a similar thing but snapping with foundations is a lot easier and a lot quicker um, and as you can see the door frames they have snapped a tiny bit below the top of the foundation but don't worry the game still registers that as a snap so again i know what you guys are probably going to be thinking now is how do we know this is stronger this is better well let's take a look so like i said pillars have 6000 hp door frames have 10k which means that if a raider is to destroy door frames they have to automatically do more damage than they did on the original one so that's 10k damage, 20k damage, 30k damage, 40k damage, 50,000 damage done, and not a single turret has dropped. Now, you might also be thinking or feeling, but a raider doesn't have a red gun, they'll be using C4. Okay, so let me come down to the bottom row, or the row underneath, and one C4. Oh, I wasn't going to blow that. <laughs> uh, Alright, okay. So, 2C4. 3C4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I want you, yes you, to actually comment your opinion of this design in the comments. And yes, I mean you, the one who is staring at the screen right now. The person who is, you know, squinting their eyes a bit. Maybe even smirking a little bit, thinking, is he talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. I want you, you comment your thoughts on the bottom of this video. Tell me, do you believe I have just made the strongest chandelier ever? Or if you believe it still needs work? If it still needs work, I'm going to work on it. 
because I, I, I have a plan and I am going to achieve this. Anyway, so I think that was 5c4. Now some turrets have dropped, you see, but look at the overall design still. Everything's still standing. So again, let's go the same door frames again. One, two, that's the square anyway. Alright, let's just blow these two. There we go. But again, can you see the chandelier itself is at no risk of falling? You're losing turrets now because they're using C4 with splash damage. But if they were doing that while tanking, they've still got to tank a whole lot. So let's say, you know, what about if they actually came and attacked the base? There goes the base, but look. Up top, still going strong, still there. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, what about if they get rid of the actual cliff black? Let's say they've blown through all of these foundations and they're now blowing the actual cliff black. Okay, let's have a look. There goes the cliff black. Let's wait for the rubble to disappear so you guys can see exactly what we're looking at. And already, if you, if you can't tell, that's a lot of damage that I've done. You know, that's, I think that was 10 or 15 C4, not including what I did up here. Now the actual cliff pad has disappeared. And here we go, look, there's still turrets. They're still shooting. They're still got to do more work to get rid of this build. And that is why I think this is now becoming, or became, the strongest chandelier ever made on arc let me know in the comments guys and like i said you the person squinting your eyes and you yes you the one smirking wondering if i'm talking to you it's you i want you to comment below your thoughts on this chandelier design we know nothing's ever going to be unraidable or undestroyable we know that but with this one does it look cheap enough that it's doable earlier game that's why I haven't put any tech servants on it. I wanted to show people that you don't have to be at the full tech level to get this one done. Do you think I could add to it to make it stronger? With my old one, what I didn't add in the video, and same in this video, is you can actually vault drop the pillars. Therefore, you know, giving it a lot more HP and making it a lot easier to defend with. So this one, of course, wouldn't have any vaults on it, but is it cheaper to build, or is it cheap enough that not having vaults means it's more expendable. You know, let me know down below, guys. And so what we're going to do now, I'm going to go and give you a speed build. And I will explain certain points of building this that you need to adapt slightly for official compared to what you could do on non-official. So stay with me, guys, and let's get started. So I came right over here, completely out of the radius, because I wanted to make sure I could place turrets if I wanted to. So as you can see, just got a standard cliff plan. Again, not looking at location, not saying build it here. Wherever your base is, is where you build it. Okay, so first we're going to come up, and we're going to place our first foundation. Now I personally try and sort of line it up here, and then move it forward. So I want it about halfway into that beam on the right there. Bring it forward to this little black bit here. Pillar in the center. Pick up. So go down one. Go down two. And go down three. And then like I said, two square foundations three triangle foundations. Now you can do this as a 360 if you really want to, depending on your location. I'm just going to do a half one today, just so you guys can see how to actually build it. Okay, so, now, door frame up, and what you can see is we cannot door frame down on official. On non-official, you can just door frame all the way down. That's all you need to do is just connect it to here and work downwards. So for the next 10, 15 seconds of this video, 
there's going to be little to no interest for you. But on official, obviously this is an issue. So what we actually need to do is pillar into the center of all these square foundations. But I'm just going to show you these two for now. And then we're going to pillar underneath when it lets me. There we go. Now you need to do two pillars underneath just so you can get a ceiling up nice and high. Now, even though we've done that, same again, we cannot door frame upwards now, but we can come down. Let me just quickly drop some of these in now. Okay, so as you can see, I can't place another, okay? So we're gonna come on the inside, gonna do a ceiling, gonna do a half pillar, make sure it's a half pillar. And then we're going to do a second pillar. As you can see, that's either touching the ground or basically next to touching the ground. That's the important thing. If you go further down, one, the pillars then snap, so you're not actually going to need a foundation. But if you're too high up, then again, the foundation can't snap. So now we've got that. As you can see, the foundation is snapping. So we're going to place that. Now we're going to get rid of this. means we can now put another foundation down which then means the game registers this snap okay so now from that we can just repeat what we did on the chandelier okay so if you guys haven't actually experimented with triangle ceilings or foundations a whole lot when you're doing this type of shape, you basically have to just then start building your way inwards by doing the opposite. So as you see here, we have three triangle foundations. So the next thing will be a square. And then here, as you can see, we have two squares. So the next thing is triangles. So again, there's triangles. So we're going to do a square, two squares. So we're going to do triangles. Okay. So now, as you can see, we did two, we did two squares, three triangles. Now we're going to do another square. Again, there's squares, triangles, square. So this one hasn't been done yet, so let's go do that. So square, triangle, square. Now as you can see that makes perfect slots for triangle foundations. Okay, are you gonna be in my way? So now here, because the last ones we did were squares, we're gonna do three triangles. And you see that meets perfectly. The outskirts you can you know do a bit more with trying to mess around with it a bit if you want. Uh, triangle foundations are easier to snap than the square foundations as you can see. Okay, so if you're not gonna do a full 360 pattern, you might need to fiddle around a bit, but essentially, as you can see that base now is all snapped. So let me go back to doing a bit of speed building and I'll get a bit more of this done for you. ceiling there and the square ceiling there we can actually connect them through other triangle ceilings so you see that how we can make a snap there we go and then from that we can now door frame down Now you can see there is a small gap between the chandelier and the ceiling, but that's okay because we're going to turn all the foundations into blocks, which will close that gap. And now that we've actually connected these as well, 
we don't need these pillars to be so big so we can get rid of the bottom pillar So right there, as you can see, you've got the foundation just above, and then there's the small gap. So now let's turn this into a block, which is why we went down three snap points or three sink points before. Well, as you see now, there's no gap at all, which is great. It makes things look a lot nicer and a lot neater. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing here now block you get the idea and then of course from here again like I said you would repeat what we did on the floor which is from square foundations triangles square foundations and so on now that gives you two different snap points so right now if I was to get rid of the platform the tower still stands because of the base and vice versa if I give it the base it still hangs because of the platform now if you wanted to guarantee more layer snapping Okay, so if you wanted to make multiple snap points, that's when you bring in what I did on the last one, which was using rows of ceiling. So square, square, triangle, 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 square, square, and so on. And now just by doing that, you've created a third snap point. So doing this multiple times is beneficial, but it's not essential if, like I said, if you're building this where resources are expensive to you, or you know, you're not quite at the point where you can just get everything you could possibly need. So, so yeah, so this one is more aimed at alpha tribes or people that don't need to struggle so much for the resources to get things done. So yeah, this is definitely not an early game design uh, and I found sometimes YouTube much prefer my alpha builds or you know things to do for the tribes that have already achieved a nice strong base so if that's what you guys prefer here we are okay so let's have a look at that now so now, now you can see there's actually five different snap points, okay? So even if it was to blow all of the third row or the fourth row, it wouldn't matter too much. If they were to get rid of the cliff plat, it wouldn't matter too much. As of defending this type of design, well, let's say you're built in a cave and use this to block the front of your cave, you can easily get in and out of this to help defend. You can even stand in the center sniping if need be, because of course, Chandeliers are part of your defense that are built to be destroyed. And what I mean by that is a lot of tribes, as soon as they have one chandelier being tanked, they panic. Don't. When you're building your base, half your base is to defend you, the other half is to be destroyed to inform you and to notify you that someone's trying to come in. So don't panic when certain things get destroyed and don't feel like you have to go out of your base because your furthest away chandelier is being tanked. It's there to be tanked. That's the point of it. Okay, let's throw up some hatch frames. Now, it's up to you how many you do. So, as you can see, that's one drop down, two drop down. Now, I find if you're trying to defend a wide area, if you're trying to find a big area, always go three, maybe even four drop down snap points. And that gives you a nice wide range. So, one, two, three, four. And this one probably wouldn't need another one because I can put tanks on the floor. One, two, three. Yeah, see, there's no point putting a hatch frame there because turrets on the ground are always going to be stronger in a sense than turrets on a hatch frame. Turrets on a hatch frame, the hatch frame could be destroyed. Turrets on the floor, the raider has to destroy them turrets. There's no, there's no walls, there's no foundations to destroy. It has to be the turret. And that is it's still doable. But that is more challenging than, say, taking out a hatch frame. There we go. Okay, there we go. So, 
as mentioned before guys please comment below let me know your thoughts okay i want to know do you believe this is one of the strongest or the strongest chandelier built do you think it needs improvement uh do you think you know i need to just start from a complete fresh design like do you think my current design has flaws in it um or is too difficult or too easy let me know anything really because like i said i'm on a mission i always play around with builds and i always try to improve them to make them strong so let me know your thoughts give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful um, and until next time i will catch you guys on alpha ball